There you go. Call the meeting to order. It's six oh five. Um, has everyone read the minutes? We have the roll call first. I'm sorry. Let me roll call first. Oh, I'm sorry. I know you're here. <laughs> roll oh, call. Aaron <laughs> Brisson. Colleen Hodges. Alex Ferrari for staff. Nick Longo. Norma Smith. Okay. Did everyone read the minutes? Um, June 6th, 11th, and 17th. Um, yeah, I think we all identified a, a comment on the July one. Which one? The, um, in July. July 11th, 11th 17th. 11th. The, the first paragraph under Reed School should actually mm -hmm. be under the CLG grant status. It just needs to move up to before the heading. I was wondering what that meant under the school. I read that. What is that about it? Okay. Are these the first ones? And I, I'm not saying it's the full under the bus, certainly. Yeah. But I'm just wondering because the format is different this time. Are these the first ones that um, our minute taker Heather has done? Or did I already announce that we had found a new minute taker? We said something, but I don't know when she started taking Okay. She, so she may have already done them. But yeah, if not, okay. just to say we finally have a... Uh, Yes. dedicated minute taker now so okay with this we'll be caught back up yay okay good good, good. so this planner bernard Barado has to be moved up to under the clg grant is that what you're saying Aaron? yes yeah that, yep. that one paragraph needs to move her mm -hmm. okay okay um do i have a motion to approve the june 6 minutes i'll make a motion I'll well, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, a motion to approve the July 11th minutes with the change. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? And was Aaron the one who had suggested? Aaron's the one that, yes. Okay. Oh. And do I have a motion to approve the July 17th minutes? I'll make a motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, opposed? No. Okay. All right. Update on CLG grant the status. You want to go first or I'll go first? Either way. Okay. Um, I got to submit the next quarterly report. It's going to look very similar to the one I showed you guys before. Um, it's going to basically say solicited through a master price agreement to, um, I, I believe you said five firms, but I will double check my yep. notes. Yeah, five. Um, with no responses and that it was uh, resubmitted. And that's where I will leave that quarterly report. And then I'll bring it to the next meeting. You can all review. If you're good, then I'll email it to you, Alex. You can sign and send it back to me. All right. No, no takers. No. Well, yeah. Nothing just yet. And I'm trying to juggle writing right. and talking. To next meeting. Yeah, I put it back out there about, I think, a little bit more than a week ago. Um, after doing some of the other digging around to jump around just a tiny bit, I also asked, I checked with finance about the availability of the town's match you know the funding with it mm -hmm. and so he had basically said um that yeah like oh well unless it's they were closing out the previous fiscal year within like two weeks at that point so he said that specific allocation you know would carry only with that fiscal year but then again because it's only like mm -hmm. four thousand like was it four thousand one hundred or four thousand i remember it being like or something. yeah i remember it being a little bit under five but he yeah. said we consider that kind of amount small enough that we would probably just pull it out of the town's general fund. So okay. I have, you know, been basically given the assurance that the money one way or the other okay. can be. So they didn't roll that. Team. Our, they didn't roll our budget from last year into the new. No, I don't think that that's how they do it. Well, well, or at least not on that. Because we had, we had a project against that money. So that it should have been a cruel. Yeah, or some some tool to move that because now the taxpayers have to pay that. It wasn't told to them in the budget hearings. Well, what okay. they'll do is it's a small they'll, amount. They'll absorb the money that was in the budget for the historic district. They'll just absorb that and then take it out of that. But it'll be a bigger. Uh, 
just not being reported properly. So before I go too far on that tangent, I just thought I'd mention that. But yeah, otherwise I got tracked that down. Then once I was sure that um, you know money would be there anyway, and one way or the other, um, put the solicitation back out, and I was able to keep that part of it the same. Um, yeah, I haven't heard much yet. Um, and again, it's only it hasn't been a full, you know, two weeks yet. I think. Um, one person replied and they asked kind of like a reading comprehension type question, like, is this for a whole um, National Register nomination? It's like, well, no, you know, it's, it says right there, it's for the mm -hmm. Historic Resources Survey. And then somebody else um, had asked, like, well, do you have like predefined uh, extents for the districts, like predefined boundaries? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, no, it's part of, you know, the task at mm -hmm. hand is to, you know, do the survey. Um, but they are going to use the application for the federal recognition, right? Yeah, but they're, yeah. So I'm just, one person thought it was both do the survey and then go so far as to prepare the nomination form, like the full, you know, thing instead of doing it in two parts, which I think is what the HPHC would have advised you guys the first time around. To do it in two yeah, parts. Yeah, that the amount of funding would yeah. have to be done in two parts. I resisted that in the beginning because to me, completing the application is the evidence of the work being done. So, and if we have to pay the first vendor for what, just assembling it in a notebook or something, and then, you know, if we had it in the form, we could evaluate their work by seeing a form that has all the information like all the other um, forms have been completed. So I don't, I don't understand the separation between the two. To me, the, the application is the main deliverable of the project, you know, but. Well, as it was defined in yeah. this thing, the scope or whatever it was basically, yeah, I would, I think in the form of an Excel spreadsheet or some, in some way that they would have provided basically the raw data that then gets turned mm -hmm. into. But it's more than raw data. It's many, many paragraphs of history and noteworthy things that happened in that area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. In any case, that's where that stands for the moment. So mm -hmm. I in this time around, rather than saying whatever, rather than saying, you know, by two weeks from now or three weeks from now, I said rolling, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean, you know, that by that same token, basically, if we're here for three weeks, nobody seems to bite, you know, <laughs> even after that, then it's like, okay, you know, why don't we reassess how we're doing this? Maybe sure. try for it. It seems like we should probably talk to the Rhode Island Historic Preservation and something commission. What's that? The second Heritage. Heritage. And tell them what kind of problem we're having and get their advice. They may say something like, well, yeah, we're having trouble too. You know, they'll have industry knowledge that we don't have. And if they can give us that industry knowledge of why we're having so much trouble, we can move on to another methodology to find somebody. Doug and I had spoke about that earlier um sometime in the last week i guess when i was thinking about like is there you know you just basically send it out as it was the first time um and part of that is you know well why did no one bite the first time is it mostly a matter of just the time when it was sent and the fact that it was only a two-week span centered on the fourth of july holiday um i had said to him you know like should we yeah maybe we reach out to hpc hphc first um to go over some of this stuff but then we talked about it and figured until we see, you know, until we give it the same amount of time, maybe it was a timing, but if not, if no one bites the second time around, then we can probably figure, okay, it's not the amount of time. You just think though, that if they had worked with us to prepare the grant in the first place to say, it is doable to break it up into two pieces due to the amount of funding, you know, if we were going to have had trouble just from the very structure of it, they would have, you know, like had that. that in mind at the time. So, so yeah. I'll remind everyone, they did say that the M master price agreement has not worked in the past and that they recommended we went with the RFP process. They mm -hmm. strongly, I guess, say, oh, strongly they... recommended we went with the RFP process and then we decided to not do that anyways and go with the NPA and now oh, we're exactly okay. where they said we would be. Oh, okay. So just well, there you go. Mm, some of what they said, I suppose they categorize it differently, but in any case, that remains an option that we can go for. Um, so, and that probably would be the next move. So if in whatever, another two weeks time or something, if nobody's biting, we can try to cast a wider net. It only means a slower process. So. 
you know, the other thing is, it seemed like the commission members should be doing all that work, taking off your plate, you know, like reaching out to the, the state. I don't have as much experience either way, but my, from what Doug had said in Cranston, that was always just something that staff had handled, that mm -hmm. at least in the sending out. So, well, yeah, sending it out maybe, but as far as developing the action plan, preparing the materials, making the contacts, that's really commission duties. So, there will be another update, I'm sure, but for now, that's all I got to report. Mm -hmm. So no one has responded to the besides the two that I mentioned, yeah. Just asking like informational yeah. type questions. Kind of like the I-95 bridge getting mm -hmm. bits. Mm -hmm. At least we're not doing a yeah, what is it up to now? Seven hundred something million. Oh. We're not playing with that kind of money, thankfully. I know. Wow. We could preserve half the town with that kind of money. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next items uh, thing is items in storage. We pack things up. Erin came with her army. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we put things in the boxes. And I guess we're waiting for... They did a good job, too. Yes, they, they did. did. Yes, they, they did. did. Mm -hmm. So they're waiting they to see when they... When they move did things. anybody go back on a, like an individual basis after that meeting on the 17th yes. to do any other categorizing or anything like that? Well, I went there with Rhode Island Historical for their... That's right. They did come by. Yeah, did, um, I haven't heard from them. Did they pick up... Was that to pick up like the loom and things? They came... No, 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 no. They came for the clothing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Did Is it is it Bob that brought his Bob. thing? Yeah. Did he ever find his check after I left? Yes, or... he did. Yeah. He did? Okay. Good. Yeah, they, got, uh, they, they, they the took the clothing, right? Like, no, they just looked at it. They're letting me know. They haven't let me know yet. Okay. So they okay. So they like they looked at it to decide whether they want it. Yeah, they said they were going to go and review and make the list of what they want. Okay, and then what did Bob do after the fact? Did he find um buyers for any of the things that he was talking about selling? I don't know. I sent him a ton of papers. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he did. Yeah, he um he had somebody that was going to take the sewing machine for twenty five dollars, but I found somebody who was going to pay fifty. They haven't taken it yet, though. Uh, we we think we can display the loom, but we, that's not an official decision yet. And there are some spools that he said somebody wanted, uh, winding spools, but I want to wait to see if we can use them for display. I mean, I'm sure we won't use them all, but I want to mm -hmm. see what we, I don't want to get rid of things and then try to get it back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Alex, those two boxes right there go with yes. that. You know that, right? I had asked about that yes. by email, but I didn't know. Okay. So what, yeah, what are those two boxes? And then those are part of the stuff that was from that room. I had taken, they were, oh, they were all yeah. in that room before. I don't remember the reason why, but when I brought them here, the, I couldn't get in or something to do it. And I had them uh, transported them. And so, you or someone told me to put it right there for the time being. I think, I think it was you. me. Right. Yeah. We couldn't get in. We yeah. couldn't get the thing unlocked. So anyway, those belong down there. Okay. And we can take them down tonight if someone's got a key to unlock that or whatever. Okay. Okay. I can well, I can walk down. I don't have a key, but I could walk with yeah. you and be moral support to see if it's unlocked. Okay. Um, that what happened? I mean, that's what happened back that time I had those. There was no way to get in and put them in there. So... Was, so nothing had to be done with them, like scanning or anything? It was just that? No, I did scan what was in there. Oh, okay. That's why I had them. Oh, okay. And some of it I didn't. I mean, there's books and stuff there's in there. There's two bins we didn't use. We can transfer mm -hmm. it to the yeah. plastic bins. Yeah. I mean, it's two bins. real big. That other box is not scannable. Let's put it that oh, way. Sure. And okay. there's there's some flags in there. And there's two real thick uh, books on civil uh, Civil War regiment and all the people in and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The other book, that one, I scanned some of the things in there that were scannable. Uh, the books were leftover ones from the Coventry Historic Society mm -hmm. that are brand new that you, they just never sold. Mm -hmm. uh, that were the DeMotto books are really nice. And uh, anyway, so just it belongs with those others. Okay. Um, I haven't heard anything new from the powers that be in terms of like what the timeline is. I just remember way back, I was told basically 
anytime after the beginning of August. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I um, went a year, I guess. I talked to the scout master and he said nobody told them anything yet, and all their things are still there. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll be ready in any case. Yeah. Yeah. For whenever the word yeah. comes down. And where is it gonna move to? Into yeah. the we'll put it into the yeah. um former band room. Yeah. And since they've got the know. space up high for everything that's not too I didn't heavy. Know if they had changed, if you changed your mind on that or what? So no, I think that's still the best yeah. option we got from what I understand. Yeah, maybe. So they're sitting there until they're ready to move them. So they haven't told you when it has to get moved yet. No. Okay. Yeah, nothing further. Yep. And so that's what I'm saying. I guess, you know, it's a rel in, in relative terms, a good position to be in to have things mm -hmm. packed. So that we can turn quickly whenever it needs to be. Yeah. But you know, the same reason why I was asking about the status for Bob is just the mm -hmm. sooner that he's mm -hmm. able to find for the few things that he thinks that he has yeah. buyers for, you know, less confusion if the town beats him to the punch uh, and says, you know, oh, it's all gotta get moved, just you know, simpler to well, get it. Well, those can it. stay there if we're gonna be moving the stuff anyway, and just get moved unless you want to put it in the containers. Well, we Do could you, put them in those two containers we had left. You have some? Yes, yeah. they're over there in the other room. Okay. It's probably just yes. as simple. I guess we might yeah. as well put it into one of the containers. Yeah. There's less chance that we forget later on. Yeah. Plus, they'll all match, so they're easy to spot. They're mm -hmm. all the same color. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, ongoing projects. Just, if, yes, word is that on because we basically put together, you know, we went through our visioning exercise and put together a working list. I figured we could say ongoing projects and then, you know, updates from that list, things that we're working on for the most part. And, and I guess I didn't follow that advice by breaking out ordinance revision. But for the most part, I had ongoing projects as just this is a place where we can provide updates on what we've been working yeah. on. Well, I just want to bring up the school, the fence, because yep. we talked about that. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you want to? Yep. And again, you'll have to, you know, do. You can let me know where to find. Well, there's not that much on it. It's just a couple of my map stuff on there and all the things that I just had scanned. No family photos? No. 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 Me as a baby. Yeah. <laughs> on the bare skin rug. Little pixie. <laughs> but there, I got about eight pictures of Reed Schoolhouse on there. So I'm going to do it. Uh, Are they the most recent ones, you think? Yes. Yeah. yeah. From like yeah. starting from about the seventh. Well, those are scanned, so that's that wouldn't be it. They're going to be JPEGs. Um, you, well, these ones are. There's like three at the top. You know what else? Here, let's do the uh, icon. Yeah, do it in the icons, and you'll be able to see it. Do you? Okay. There you go. And then once they load, there you go. There you go. It'll take the time it takes, I guess. Because these are some of the maps I scanned that come from the society and that too. Come on. It's the is that those are them right there. Those up here. Say H E I C. Oh, okay. they won't open. Let's they will. They're just not loading up. To see they keep using What's this. What's XMP? Let's try with photos. Never seen that extension before. Video extension. Oh, it's a video extension? XMP is a video extension? No, I don't know. They, no, the HEIC, it's H -E -I -C saying that's a video it's file. It's a video file. And I don't suppose. You know, video don't know play on. I don't know why it does that. They're video? Got other people. No, it's my software like program. A, is it an Apple computer you've got? Maybe is it like an Apple to Windows thing? No, it's uh, actually the the software I use for the photography that I'm, you know, clean them up, modify them with. Yeah. But I've had another case where people couldn't open it. So I, 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 and I don't know if anything works. That. I didn't think it'd be an issue. Do you have a video player on them? It is. I don't think you do. Is this one? Did you select photo? Open yeah. Photos? Yeah. Yeah, but it's like it wouldn't let you open them. No, I had someone else have that happen. It wouldn't open it. And I don't know why. And I don't know what you're going to do with it. Whether it's just because my software does it on purpose, so mm. unless you have that software, you can't open it. Oh no, that's not it. Um, 
Um, How about a save as? Is there a possible view of save as? Thought I'd make right, it easy by right click that. on it and save as. Doesn't give me that option. Rename. No. I try it well. Windows Media Player. Uh, try it. If I, I mean, think what I'd have to do is send them directly to you. Hold on. Phone. No. The counter it's not going to do it. I know, yeah. I, I, I know someone else, really, because I did it from my from that, from my <clears> computer, <throat> once I did it and put it into my, and it's called a, ADC, is a, I think is a program I have, um, I buy. And I, it's just, and I think they modify it somehow, but I have them on my phone. If there's a way for us to do it from my phone. Depends on your connection, what kind of cord do you have? Okay. I got to figure that out. I'm going to, I'm going to have to come back to that company because this is ridiculous. Might be something in the help menu on your software. Yeah. yeah. What kind of phone do you have? Because what ended up happening, the same thing. I did it to someone I was sending yeah. stuff to with the pictures yeah, I'd done, and I couldn't open it, just like you just had asked, and I, and I didn't think about it. Yeah. I ended up sending them directly from my phone, which is a JPEG, mm -hmm. but Impressive. I always download them through their program. I think I, I told you that. It does it automatically. Yeah. I put the phone yeah. next to the thing. It'll say, okay, yeah. download, and I hit it, and it downloads so 25 of them. So you don't have an option to save as what's like happening? Right? Well, maybe I do, and I don't know enough uh, about iPhone. I mean, I've just yeah. had this happen recently yeah. where I'm finding that people aren't able to open it. But my theory is now is that it's their program. Is that the software that you use to colorize stuff? Too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. And, okay. So. What um, kind of what kind of connection do you have on your phone, Paul? Is it an iPhone? It's an iPhone. Uh, never mind. You have, you have iPhone? I don't always carry the portal. I have so many pictures on it because they're scanning all this stuff mm -hmm. between my own stuff and the other. I think. don't have the iPhone cord with me. Because all you need is a charger cord and you can run it right into a USB port. Needless to say, well, yes. How many percent? The fence is in bad condition. Is, uh, Does 50% of it need to be replaced? 70%, 30%? Well, if you're going to replace it, you get 100%. Really? I mean, it's in rough shape. That's why I wanted to show you the pictures because I did documented the whole thing. Yeah. And it's in rough shape. Yes, could you scrape it and paint it and get a few more years out of it? You definitely could. And if that's the route you want me to take to get some pricing on, I will. Uh, but, oh, here they are. We don't okay. need budget anyway, though. So. I mean, you have to blow them up in order to see it. But they're, you know... They, it, they're in pretty rough shape. Mm -hmm. So you might get one more painting cycle out of them that'll last for three or four years yeah. and then replace them. But, you know, what's it going to cost with all the labor? Because the labor is expensive. Yeah, yeah. We don't have budget. You know, and you, we have like a thousand bucks. Is that what we decided last time? I mean, time fences process? are always labor intensive. Yeah. The, um, the, the pickets. I mean. And even if you just paint that, it, I mean, that's just means the gate still doesn't that work. shows you, you know, the bottom of that. You know, okay. and that's typical of the condition they're in. And a lot of it, the wood is very punky, yeah. you know, so. How about the posts? Are they four by four posts in I'll cement? Show you. I'll show you. Are they in cement? I'm hoping they are. They are, but it is a typical post in the connection and how it's falling apart, you know, where the fences come together. Yeah. So, so do you think that the posts are in good enough condition? I see this one. It looks more like paint peeling. It's not no. wood checking, is it? That that's just crazing of the paint. No, that's the wood splitting. Oh yeah, it's yeah, not. Okay. It's are, are those posts mounted in concrete ball? Or are they just in the ground? I'm not sure. They're very solid that way, but I mean they are. I mean they're in the later stages of. Mm. Deterioration. I don't know that so, it's even worth painting it. Before. I know that's you're why I'm saying wait. I would just leave it alone until it could be replaced. Yeah, that's not just and, a check either. You're right. That's yes, a split. that's a split, mm -hmm. and that's typical of what's happening. It was painted when they did the school over to so, match. So it was painted. I mean, it would, which wasn't that long ago. It would cost a lot to paint this fence. It's, you know, it's quite a few linear feet of it with all the individual pickets, the top rails, everything that I don't 
like paint. I don't think that it, it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah. leave it alone. It just let it alone for the time being. I, I can get a price be. on what just to have for future reference. Mm -hmm. on I think we should build it into a budget place. next year. Yeah. Like yeah. we'll we'll come up with numbers for everything. You know, using yeah. that budget that I started as our yeah. framework, and then uh, put just uh, very well written justifications for why we need the different monies. Yep. yep. I should. I mean, only because I thought for sure we'd be able to look at them on head and print them out. I should have just printed them. So you can pass them around and look at them and I do it. But it was just, yeah. the point is, you had them on here and you could blow them up and really yeah. show it. That up, would have but, been, I know, that would have been you know, the ideal. Yeah, that's yeah. too much. But we know, for, but we know for next time, yeah. I guess. And so I will, you know, I don't know, I'll get a chance to do it before our next meeting, but uh, I'll see if we get an estimate on the fence. And, uh, and find least, out what it would cost for a new one. Yeah, at least one we'll of those numbers for because in a few months we'll already be thinking budget. Like, yeah. when does the town start budget? December? Start thinking about it. They start talking to the department. It's either that or might be a little of like January. a couple of months January. later. Yeah, okay. the other, winter time. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to point out, and I did this one window, is if you look at this and scroll around, you'll see the condition. The putty is starting to fall out of the windows. All right, because they just, you know, one of the reasons we put the plexi on, which is easily removable, but have them do it that way, was because of this. And with the plexi on now, they'll last a lot longer, but the windows themselves are in need of the paint, you know, painted doing it. I can get someone to look at it to give a price on those yeah. for next year. We but at least this time thing. when they get done, they're going to get protected. The plexi's only been on there for a year. And all the deterioration had already happened. Do you think the plexiglass is uh, hastening the no. structure, no. like holding in moisture? No, no, but the old plexiglass no. was taken off when they redid the school, which was yep. a few years, yep. years ago. And then nothing was on the. No, the plexi protects it. It doesn't uh, hold. That is strictly from all the weathering and the rain yeah. hitting it. And the, you do you know, think we that, could do that so. for under a thousand? How many windows is it? Four, six, six. six. Is it six? Six. six. Yeah. Hundred bucks each window. No. More? No. Just to re-chink them? He's laughing. <laughs> Each window will probably take, if that, to Typical do it right, by the time you dig them out, put the putty in, prime them, and put two, you know, do that, yeah. it's probably at least three, maybe four hours time per window, uh -huh. okay? And the minimum you're going to pay is 40 to $45 an hour, maybe 50 mm -hmm. all right, for a professional. Nowadays, in today's world, so, so it's probably more like two hundred window, two hundred window times, yeah, yeah, um, six, yeah, at least. Yeah. I mean, again, so I, my paint will give me, give me a number on it, you yeah. know, for the guy that did the, the poll, uh, and I don't say it because again, he's very fair and reasonable, and uh, yeah. less expensive than most, so. He's doing that for me with Patuxent Valley mm -hmm. Preservation right now. They got prices for their exterior of the building, not the part that I did, but the mm -hmm. old part, because okay. they couldn't do it then. But they've got some money budgeted and a matching grant. To do it. And they have prices that range from 40 some thousand mm -hmm. to 21,000. One was 21 to 22, one was 35, and one was 40 some, 42. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, again, depending on what uh, South is going to charge and think his rates are worth and whatever. So anyway. It's another good uh, CLG grant kind of thing. Yeah. To me, it sounds like the windows are more urgent than the fence right now. So they are. Uh, they are. I mean, and it just, I mean, they're getting to that point. It's not that it needs to be done immediately, but mm -hmm. it should get done it next spring done. or something, you know. Yeah. So time to plan on it. And so that'll be another thing in the budget. I can ask Jim uh, Westell, the painter, to look at them and give him a number mm -hmm. for doing it. And if he can't, I have somebody else. You know, oh, we we have the contacts, yeah. Okay. Okay. So the fence is just staying as it is for the yep. being. Okay. Fence will stay and we'll get estimate on mm -hmm. full replacement. And of course, that's going to be a good size number and then see if it can be budgeted next year. Or Has anybody looked at the outhouses? I'm sorry, what? The outhouses. The outhouses, uh, I took pictures of that too. Uh, what are they? They're moldy, aren't they? They yeah. got to be pretty tight. They, they look just sitting on the ground, aren't they? 
Well, the roots are. It's the roots. I, I'll show you. Mossy. I purposely took it. And well, it's not only that. You got the bulkhead is going to be in need too. Yeah, that's going to be a critical issue. Bulkheads, yeah. you know, and then they always get like first things to go. The that's the kind of thing people outhouse yeah, isn't bad except for the roof, but it probably can just do with the again. I can have Jim look at them all like you can power wash that off with a you know less not heavy pressure, but put the stuff on and, and it'll look really good for a while. What so, is it, moss on the yeah, asphalt yeah. angles? It's, they're not, they're wood. Oh, they are. They cedar? Well, I'll they're show they're you how looking. thick it is. Oh, yeah, it looks like right. the back of my shed. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they're in the, it should be cleaned off. Obviously, they're not in great shape. That roof needs to be re shingled with cedar shingles at some point. So, the roll through, I mean, the Reed Schoolhouse, you got to look at it like it's an important part of Carpentry history. Yep. And even if that has to wait till the following yeah. year. Well, but, it's the flagship of our yep, it needs efforts. Yep. Those things need to be addressed over time. So, mm. We'll put it all in the budget next year. Yep. We'll see what we can get. Yep. What do normally do with building maintenance stuff? It's so that's the domain of public works. With the Reed Schoolhouse, can you get a grant for any of this stuff because of what it is? I mean, they got it to do the paint, right? It or did the, the top? Right? Or did it the was, top it was a CLG grant. It was. You cannot get Champlain anymore. They won't do no, municipalities. No. But I mean, it, I, it depends, I, is right. there money available through some? I can go look these, because they, they change like the, they change the way the wording is written every year. Yeah. So like the one that we applied for for the, the survey was for research only, right? Mm -hmm. So then the the wording has to come out as it's physical improvements or maintenance, then yes. we can apply for it. Yep. Um so they change the way the work the grants written every other year. So we'll have to see what it looks okay. like this year. Yep. But I think what I heard Norma saying was that. Um, money's not available for a certain kind of grant isn't available for municipalities. Champion. Some so, grants are not. So but is it still them. possible that there is some kind of grant for a municipality grant only? Grant. Yeah, you okay. just got to find them. Mm -hmm. um, but Champlain used to do municipal buildings. Yeah. Okay. I like the it's thought that you were going with, though. Is it's, a, it's a town-owned building. They have a maintenance budget for maintaining town buildings. Why can't we just tap that budget? <laughs> I know you said it's DPW, but we should at least ask that yeah. it's their job to maintain town building with the town building. Do we talk to Captain McGee? Yeah, Captain. And I know we, I think a month or two ago, said, yeah, when we know what it is that we're looking at, we've got quotes and things mm -hmm. like that to write it out, write out what, it, what does the place need and spell it out. You know, what's the value? Mm -hmm. What are the cost to this facing. is what a private contractor would charge to do these things. Is there a way to do this in a, in a different way? Why would way? we have to do that? Why does DPW need to know what a contractor would charge? We just tell them what each they go over and they write it up. Because it'd be cheaper to use their maintenance people. Yeah. I'm, I'm with so you, but lives are a different yeah. process than any other building. So if, well, it should if be. something in here needs to be yeah. replaced, so you don't have to go get contractors evaluated. You just say go fix that it. That is true. So I don't know what they're backlog their work looks like i don't know about which built you know what for the town place? buildings that they have people working in i don't know how much there is to be done i i don't have any way of knowing either way I so the only way to find out is to ask them right yeah but again if they come back and say yeah well we've got a lot of things to do and we've got you know actual town workers in some of these it'd be nice to be able to say instead of boy you were right you know maybe it'd be nice to have something that says, well, this is why, you know, this is, remember, this is the value of the Reed School building. Um, we've looked into this, you know, these specific aspects of it. I don't know. It's some kind of, I, I would think it'd be at least a nice gesture. Um, but, you know, we'll need to have my mind changed. Well, and on that note, what I probably should do, like when I had to do one for the uh, summit yeah. building where we were before, and I did the report, and I should probably do these pictures and just put narrative on them and do them in a format like that. Because then yeah. I can turn it into a PDF and it's got the picture and the narrative like I had done for 
at Summit. And I think there is some value in that. I mean, it is, it is a snapshot in time, literally. What yeah. well, is. To give them an idea that, yeah. okay, this is the first thing that needs to be done, and this is the reason why. Yeah. And then maybe we could wait a year, and next year we can do this. So they have a heads up that this is coming down the yeah. pike so that you're not dumping it all on them in one, at one time. So, Paul, you're saying you could design kind of like a sales pitch? Suppose well, there, would a, uh, there would be a report. You know, a yeah. uh, multiple page thing, okay. pictures, and uh, each one would have, you know, one would be like on the outhouse building, what it needs. You'd have the bulkhead, you have the windows, you know, be number four, and I'm um, number three, and number four would be the fence. Mm -hmm. And I'd do a number of pictures of that and some, you know, that I propped and close up on it to show it. But, you know, to me, it seemed like probably a lot more effective and streamlined if we just ask them to do a job walk you know let's meet there for a job walk bring your little clipboard mr mm -hmm. mcgee and i mean you can still turn us down but the job walk is the way mm -hmm. it should be really up until now they have not done maintenance on school yeah they haven't had to it's different now that's your approach better you know, I mean, come I straight out with it. Set something like that up. My, my opinion is you need both. Yeah, I would agree with you. Be, because it's it's people, other people, people, walk, but it's other people good are going to ask the question and relying on Kevin McGee and a walkthrough to get it's, it done. And it's not going to be done. Kevin, I can almost guarantee because that. Because you might have to go before the town council or whatever. And just like, I again, that report I did was very effective. We went before the town council and made copies for everybody and they had it to look at. And they realized how bad the condition of that building was. Summit. And you're not going to get them all out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, on it. And just your idea is very good because then he knows firsthand. But I think you need the other in order to have something that's a handout that they can give to other people besides him to try and educate them on what the, the particular problems are mm -hmm. and show it. Yeah, I'm not trying to make work for myself. Believe no, it. but yeah. I think no, you're no, right. No, no, you need the visuals and you need. Yeah. And then it's documented as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. That's. Exactly. Because that's what always happens. They ask, well, why, what do you mean? You know, why, why do you need to do this? And if you've got that with the pictures there for them and you say, well, here it is. Yeah. Do it on PowerPoint. And then we can go to town council and make a presentation on the screens right there. And they'll they'll say something about I don't know how to do PowerPoint. Come on now. I know how to do the other and uh -huh. word and do that, but I never did a PowerPoint. No? Yeah. Oh, I'll teach I'll you how to do PowerPoint. You're gonna teach so me. easy. Oh, yeah. You're gonna teach me. It's so easy. If you can use Word, you can got you got PowerPoint. Yeah. It's the same thing. Insert picture, insert text box, mm -hmm. bingo. I do think overall, we I've never done it. I honestly have. We need to be more visible. You no know, council, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Um, any other ongoing projects people want to talk about? Um, I'm pretty close to, actually, I could have had it today, but I knew we were going to be talking about the ordinance. But uh, at the next meeting, I can present the uh, vision and mission statement. Okay. I'm not writing it, but I'm going to present you guys with my research. Um, and I have some experience with developing these sort of things. So my plan is to um, give us a little bit of education on what the plans, what the statements need to say, how what needs to be included. And then I'll bring you examples mm -hmm. um, of um, what I think are good mission and vision statements. And then we'll convene again at the next meeting, maybe, mm -hmm. and get everybody's ideas. Okay. So good. Anything uh, else? Yeah, you can add the guidance and standards to the next meeting as well. Oh, good. Um, so Nick gave us, gave me our current ones. So I've just been looking at yeah. kind of like you're doing doing research. How do yep. other people structure it? What are we there missing from ours? Best we practice want to add this. the way to go. Yeah. Um, but do you like that document? It's pretty cool, huh? That, they did it. It actually looks pretty comprehensive yeah. already. So, yeah. um, but we at least we'll have said yes. We still agree director. that's the way we want it to to look. Yeah. The planning director made that up. And Aaron, do you plan to follow the same basic format of the first? You know, when I say the first meeting, so like next month would be. Um, here's like a survey of what these things. 
could include should look like and then the second time around is we bring a draft to workshop is that the idea yeah so here's our here's our current one um here's examples of from other other towns sections that other towns have that we don't or or vice versa then we can talk about um if we want to add any of those sections there you made me think of something when i heard you use the term workshop just an idea. Do you think we should have separate meetings for workshops, like breakout sessions, like you know, you're going to present your standards and guidelines work, and another one I would present the mission statement, or do you think we can handle it all just in the regular meetings? Because I would imagine, and I uh, at least for the mission and vision statement, my uh, package is probably going to take 20 minutes to go through. It's going to be really organized and just present it, throw it out there, and we'll talk about it next time. But even taking 20 minutes out of an hour and a half meeting could be problematic. I don't think so. Yeah. No? No. I mean, I mean like tonight, we did, yeah. Get sidetracked. The mission and vision state, I mean, the, um, the visioning exercise, I mean, we were spending 40, 45 minutes, yeah. you know, each meeting on that. And now, Technically, you know, if that phase is done with, this is the outgrowth of it. Yep. This is the work yeah. part of yeah. it now. I think it was, so, I think it's fine to yeah, just we put it on a regular agenda. the time we were spending before on that with the projects mm -hmm. that we're yeah. trying to articulate. You can also change our minds. So next month we're like, wow, we'll that took a, a whole lot yeah. longer. Let's we not do yeah. that next let's time. Let's try it first. It took too long. No. <laughs> My gut would tell me it probably should work fine, but uh, I'm trial and error. Okay. Name the game. Right. Doesn't work. Change it. I talked to Cody Houghton about the website. Mm -hmm. He's like, sure, whatever you want. Oh, let's go then. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult. You talked to who? The Cody. guy that's in charge IT. of the website. IT. And oh, oh, IT. Yeah. Nice guy. And okay. so, yes. um, you know, basically, he. he I, I need a feel for what you all want on it. I know you wanted some background, some history, some um, written stuff, a lot of pictures. I want it to look like East Greenwich's website, or even, uh, I think it's North Providence. I, I've been looking at a lot of them mm -hmm. lately. And see what kind of format you want. And then once we decide what kind of format we want it to be, then it's just to sit down with him to see what it is, how he feels, you know, yep. he may have some ideas. Um, some of the stuff he does, he says you can do separate pages or you can do like one page where you put your links at the top and it just spits yeah. you further down the page um, or you can do separate pages. But, and I told him, I said, there's probably going to be a ton of pictures. So just heads up. So is there a, like a limit on size? And he goes, like, <laughs> so does, does he have a, I guess, I've never designed a website. Do you decide the content first and then figure out the layout or do you decide your layout and then go hunt for your content? I like to look at, what types of content you want to put on it, and then from those types, figure out what your layout's going to be. Well, because if it's predominantly can... photos, that's going to be a different thing than than text. Yeah. We'll have to ask him too, and we have some idea of yeah. If we want, know that we got a lot of pictures, you know, is there like a gallery function? You know, we can ask right. him things like that because I know that at least for like the planning department page, um, when he made one or two changes there, he. The way that he described the web builder, it seemed like it was more rigid than, and maybe that's just the nature of town websites. Maybe they're not expecting great creativity. But I remember him saying, like, little things like the attachments that shows up on a sidebar. He's like, oh, no, you can't get rid of that. That's always there. So yeah, there's going to be formatting you know, that the town has that you're going to have to live with. Yeah, you're gonna work so you have to so work we can with give it. him maybe, like, maybe even if it's drawn out on a piece of paper, that's something to... Yeah. Very, to literally or metaphorically sketch what we're yeah. thinking of. And then you can maybe digest that and say, you know, I went back and checked and I don't have a gallery function, but I can do it this way. You know, probably could just study, like I said, some of the neighboring um, municipalities and um, then just take screenshots and bring that to your meeting. Hey, these are the top three. And, like. and then the question as far as whether you want to use this as an archival type of situation. And so that eats up a ton of space, mm -hmm. but he didn't seem to mind about that. We definitely need um, that. So. so another thing I think that before we even get started is to really like 
consider who our audience is going to be and then model the website after after that like okay so it's going to be citizens it's going to be um like neighboring towns i mean so and that way we can make sure that we focus our efforts and put the right stuff on there and not just please ourselves no we need to target it to who we want to influence right and so i think a lot of stuff nowadays is done with social media but what you do is you use your social media account to drive them back to the website. Yeah, there you go. So, because that's where the bulk of the information yeah. and the data is going to be. Yeah. Um, Maybe we even get town council folks to look Well, at that's, it. and that's one of your audiences. If you yeah. sit down and you list your audiences, yes, you want the general public there. You want your elected officials there. there you was, want the movers and shakers in the a, town. That's a town your council schools. presentation at one of the meetings. You want your schools yeah. using it. Um, so you, school, your libraries. Sure. You yeah. want all those people to be able to use yep. that that information. So you kind of organize it the way, like library people That's have a certain way to look at data. That's so what you look at. kind of design it so that they're comfortable with it. But I like the idea of when we're ready to roll it out to present it to the town council, sure. be a great way to toot the horn of the commission and get some enthusiasm. It, there's, so, it, there's so much that I've looked at with the from the Coventry Historical Society that's already been done, that's been written, that can be used, that mm -hmm. you don't yeah. have to do a lot of work on it. The research was done that is on the history of all the villages, uh, the mill yeah. areas. Yeah. On, you uh, have possession the, of all that? Oh, I, I've scanned a lot of it. Okay. You know? So you're not and only you scanning can, pictures, but you have um, I've narrative? Done, I've done a ton of narrative. He's got a ton of narrative. Okay. Yep. Do you got to translate it from the picture yep. that he took of it right. into a typewritten page yeah nobody yeah. is going to no, wade right. through a photo yeah. of handwritten no yeah. not going to happen no but it's, um, but it's all been done you don't yeah. have to recreate yeah. the, no that's great but uh there is so much of it but i mean is yeah. that how we want to break it down do you want to do it by you know by villages do you want to do it by time frames do you want to do it by okay? These are all pictures, and this is all narrative. So there's a lot of different ways to look at that. Well, as to how do you want to organize the cities? If you do a village, you're doing it by time frame because yeah. you're taking the village sure. from when it was started till later on. So you're doing both in that. I'm not saying that's no, uh, I know, but that's uh, that's how a lot of the one. stuff yeah. that I have was broken down. Yeah. That I yeah by village. Or, there's a lot of different ways have to do pictures it. of is that it was done by the, the villages. Yeah, the there was East Greenwich, Rice by City. And you'd be surprised how many people in this town don't even know what the villages are. Yeah. Oh, I know. I say it's I'm just... from Washington. Like, D.C.? No. I, it's, <laughs> because of... it's, a gonna, it's gonna be a it's... lot of work to create. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we're a oh, big yeah. town. But we're not like the size of us. Because it can be a posting schedule too, you know. No, you could just whatever I think it take, it's gonna take two years to create that. It's kind of in a way initial. Kind of nice though to have if you've got it. monthly or whatever kind of updates. You know, yeah, it has to change. Yeah. Stagnant yeah. websites don't do anything. It's good for engagement it needs on your to social change. media. You know, you and I, say check the website, new yeah. thing up there. You know, and I don't think we need to wait until it's complete. No, you or don't. No, no, no. Let's get that, the bones that's up there. Take a long yeah. time. And then let's just start you adding to page. it. Yeah, the homepage, a pretty looking homepage. Hey, so if, if for data entry, how old, what would that look like? Like if I want to help and. I guess we'd have to go to a town location. I don't know if we're behind the firewall when we're doing that. Yeah, I don't know that we'd be updating it. I think we'd be sending it to him and they'd be updating okay. it. Okay, because like we were saying, you've got to convert a picture of right. text to actual text. And I don't mind doing don't... that part. And I would just, mm. you know, send it to them, send or... it to them and, and say, this is what we want on this page. This is what I want it to look like. Once we get a system down, I don't think it's going to be yeah, that difficult. They're not going to do the typing in the... Right. They're just going to take what we send them and put it where like, we tell them to put it. Send them a Word document or a PDF. Mm -hmm. So um, I can help Word. with that. When it's time to get started on that, from the, home, I'll just typing those, convert stuff. Yep. I'm really good with formatting and all that kind of because stuff. Because then that's the other thing we'll have to look at. We want to have a consistent formatting yes. through the whole thing. Yeah. Um, whatever font type we pick, whatever you know font colors or whatever we pick yeah stick with it because yep. we don't want it's it the look 15 different types of fonts and whatever but it but is that's helpful like you have to look at other towns oh absolutely yeah. east greenwich narragansett has very narragansett, good you know yeah, i looked at that uh, one. like that and you know certain towns have better ones than ours yeah. because they've been at it for a long time mm -hmm. 
And uh, I thought it was just kind of rudimentary. I hate that I didn't design websites. Yeah. So the other question I had for you is when it comes to written pieces of paper, whether they be maps or whatever, who is the person who decides what logos, format? Who do I go to for that? You just like letterhead type stuff? Letterheads, when you do pamphlets, there's usually a town logo or town format that is used. Yeah. Uh, isn't that person going to do that part for you? To... No, he's IT. He's IT. Oh, I know. Oh, for I... the website. But I'm talking about you have to have items, I mean, that go whether we do the pamphlets or the maps or the oh, right. driving We're tour the or the whatever that is, all that written mm -hmm. paraphernalia mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. probably has to have some type of standardized, I don't know. I'm if not it's not pulled, yeah. yeah. I have no better answer for you at this point than to like, you know, go to the town calendar where that usually is. Just take a nice <laughs> screenshot. Yeah. They don't have a not that I'm aware a of. Process for this stuff. Um, yeah, there's gotta be there's gotta, I, you don't I mean like you would think a more well, a larger probably somewhere too. A larger city might have like a communications department. Um you we probably have a graphic design department and they had all that stuff. Yeah, I, I don't know. It probably would be as simple as like you show you know the planning department yeah you show the planning department say you know here's how it looks and we just look at it and as long as it doesn't say like you know drive off this mountain <laughs> and crash you know we'd probably be fine with putting the town's name okay. on it that makes it a whole lot easier we can make up our own um look if you will mm -hmm. but not, 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 with, not changing the logo or anything. Not, no, you wouldn't change the logo but you know there's places that it has to be this color and the well, font sure. type has to be this. Mm -hmm. And the logo is one thing that's that's a picture. You just snag that. But you know, these letters can be whatever we want them to be. Mm -hmm. If we do do pamphlets, yeah. the yeah. background can be whatever color we want it to be. Yeah. It doesn't, they don't have a standardized but someone is in possession you know, of those logos in electronic form. Oh, you, you can know, steal so, them off. Because that way they'll be they'll be clear and the right color. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's still not the same as getting the actual. Could we be creating a logo for the historic commission that's our own? Yeah, um, I think we should. I think you want to be careful of that. I don't say no, but I think you want to be careful of confusing the issue. Well, um, I don't mean for that. I just mean for a letter head and stuff. Yeah, like right. For our own thing. I, I would say you take your town logo and you um, incorporate your title for the organization in with the town's information. Um, I can't see it on yours. It does. It, it's hard to read even on this. I know it is. That's it's why I said we got, because we, it's gold on navy yeah. blue, yeah, it's and not, it's, it's hard to read. Clear. Um, logo. And I think that's supposed to be an elephant in the middle, but it's hard to see. But, sure it's an elephant. All right, so we'll so, come up with some some variations of um, formatting and see what everybody thinks. And again, best practice, we can look at some of the other. Um, Commission's websites and see what they use for a logo. I don't remember seeing logos, but I wasn't well, looking. Like <laughs> strange, if I remember, as I looked recently, they have the town you know, courthouse or whatever. I think mm -hmm. as part of it, yeah. and like that, because it's a famous building. In, oh, I see. In like as incorporated right. into yeah. their logo. Like if you take something or, that's you know. Is that the town like logo or the historical the, commission's logo? Historical commission. Oh, well, whatever that could be. Now this website is this. Okay. Do you have to have a domain name, or is it just going going under the town? It's the uh, page on the town. It'll website. be a page it's on the page. town's yeah. website. Mm -hmm. And in talking to him, he was like, you know, some people have websites they like, and some people, some departments don't, and I'm not sure how to do that. And I, you know, so you have a landing page already with the commission, the different commissions that you have. There's your landing page. Now from that, let's. Mm -hmm. You could so he already has it kind of set up. I think we have the opportunity here to um, travel into new waters. Mm -hmm. Another way to expand your reach. Speaking of websites, have they updated the names of the commissioners on the yes. commission? Is it mm -hmm. okay? Oh, us. Yes. And that reminded, yeah, when I was looking at that, um, and oh, I meant to check beforehand. I think this is their logo on East Greenwich. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, the town of East Greenwich. That's the town. Yeah. 
that's on the, so maybe they don't have one then but see that's on the historic district yeah i'm sure I'm, i can't just, imagine they would make a separate logo for the historic yeah. commission because it's part of the town yeah um now east greenwich historical society probably has their own logo but but i think you can take the town's logo and you can you know put fancy lettering historic preservation or commission or whatever and just make mm -hmm. that your yeah. you know, signature whatever the look that you want to go with does anybody have preferences on colors Apparently navy blue, green, and red are the logo colors, but we have to stick with that. Tommy and colors. Certainly not orange and neon and purple. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. Okay, we'll come up with different ideas. Um, I'm making my list of places. Places? We have talked about. Expanding the points of interest. Yeah. Ah, yes. So, so absolutely. We'll have that next month. That's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. We'll have that next month. So, okay. What time is it? Seven. Seven. All right. Let's. Uh, we are done. We can move on to the ordinance revision. Okay. Yeah, there's no real visual with it. Um, Nick had sent over an uh, um, updated version of the red line version, which I think you guys had seen back in like November or something. Um, I'm pretty sure. But basically, the update of the ordinance that included the landmark language. Um, so part of it was working that into in Word into the format that the town council mm -hmm. likes to see it, which is if you've ever seen like when they do the ordinance proposals, it's like the whole left column has, you know, a number for every single line. So, legal document, yeah. yeah, so they're able to, um, if they want to make, you know, whatever, they're trying to find their place. So one of those things, so importing text, pasting, as soon as you do that, Word explodes and fixing the format. It back. But that should be available already in that, if that, unless that's something new that they're doing. In other words, I never, well, I haven't done an ordinance one before. So I had never worked on it. I mean, this ordinance, when it was put together no. in 19... 2013. 20, so in 2013, they didn't use that? They have a, no, they have might... a, the, it was just a PDF and it was, you know, oh. plain like from a Word document. So as time has gone on, their tastes have changed. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so I put that into Word. Um, there was also the component to it of a, of expanding the actual properties covered under historical area zoning overlay. And so we met with um, the town manager and assistant town manager to vet the list and to go through and see, you know, how many they were willing to roll into this same initial uh, update of it. And so they were fine with um, adding the Reed School and the Summit Library as, um, you know, local historic properties, which, you know, according to the new nomenclature for what it's worth, they would be landmarks, but it's the same regulatory protection. And and this, of course, you, you know, maintain the two that we've got. There is no regulatory protection as a local uh, historic it, landmark. No, but as a, under the local historic district idea, I'm saying it's like, they're in theory, they're called when, if, you know, knock on wood, when, they get instituted um but i'm saying it's the same basic set of protections right so then we'll use the standards before. and guidelines like if somebody wants to buy summit library then they have to come before our commission if they propose to do something with it yeah some kind of alteration to the exterior then well, they submit an application right? I mean, the building is falling down. well yes in practice yes <clears throat> so okay so reed schoolhouse summit library that's the easy stuff <clears throat> in your email, you mentioned that some no longer belong to the town. Do you know which ones that was? Yeah, can I see the list? Yeah. It might help dog my memory. The first one, the uh, former Anthony School is not town-owned anymore. Um, yeah, it's already been modified and turned into a private business. Mm -hmm. It's I, an old list. I just yeah, pulled it up. I don't believe that the original townhouse site i'm pretty sure that that was the other one that's not town owned anymore 
original. Oh, um, so along with the Mirage. Fox. Maple Valley and Madison. I think that's privately owned. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure for those two, it was that there were a couple, um, like the the teen center. They were they were clearly trying to think of so many different things. They just they were not ready to add another consideration to it. They're still trying to get their bearings on like. You know, they started launching, well, how many parking spaces are there really? What can you even do at all in the first place? So they have some sorting out to do before they're ready to make any kind of decision either way. And, and who's they? Tom town Tom manager, assistant oh, town Tom. manager, when we talked with them. That's funny. That... But they, they did say, you know, it's not like we're opposed to the idea. It's just we're, you know, we're no, not there really yet. funny that Marie, Maria is saying, saying that because she was part of this, oh, let's make it a landmark. Yeah. Yeah. when the state came it may have been that they found something you know as time went on that then made them reconsider you know i think just throw it out on the table and it's not unusual for municipalities to resist the idea of hindering um, development and if we call that historic local historic landmark they're considered they're concerned that it will limit the buyer pool so i get that but i think also that because the building's not worth the whole heck of a lot because of parking and all that stuff is that it's time for the town to step up and show their commitment to what they say they're committed to and that is our history you know mm -hmm. that and that's where the town can shine so i mean reed schoolhouse and summit library reed schoolhouse has already got all kinds of protection you know so that's a summit doesn't you know summit doesn't i'm glad to see summits on there yeah, they don't so, have any potential. So I consider that a big win but right there. I mean, going back to Anthony, uh, again, my firm belief is uh, it should be marketed as a single family dwelling. Yeah. That's the only real use that mm -hmm. building has because of where it's located in the yeah. lack of parking. Mm -hmm. It's no different than the library next door. And the library next door is a perfect example because mm -hmm. the people that bought that and renovated it and lived there until just recently and it sold literally in the first month it was on the market yeah in, the, in spite of the fact that it's right there on the main road because it's a, a great location on the river you get a water view and it has and no, no protections right if the, it comes anthony, to the planning and the anthony uh, athletic association building looks like it's big but it's really not i mean it would make yeah. a, you know an ideal size for a single family home for somebody and with the removal of that ramp on the side and stuff You've got the way to get into the back and you can pull in mm -hmm. and have enough parking for a single family residence. I'm only just throwing that out there because in my experience and what I do, that could be turned into a lovely uh, place. It's, it has to be sold inexpensively for someone to afford to do it. Mm -hmm. But so where do you no on... business is going to go in there with the, you know, with it being no, it's no parking. I, the town doesn't care if it's a business or a single family yeah. that buys it. Right. They just want it off the books. They yeah. want the sixty no, grand or hundred grand. So or I, I mean, I don't know how that happens to, you know, get them to that point to market it that way. But that would be my recommendation. You know? So how, where do you stand as far as declaring it a local historic landmark? They should. You think and then it, then that would control the exterior of yeah. it to a degree. And it in has, some ways, it always has to be sensible. Yeah. I ride both fences because I go on before I plenty of historic commissions. And, you know, you always try to preserve as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And I've been to before ones that, that I think Providence are absolutely ridiculous. And by the time I was done, they did exactly the way I had it drawn, but they had to make you jump through hoops before. Yeah. Yeah. But with that one, certain things, yes, you try and keep the, you know, preserve the character of the building. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to force someone to preserve those windows, they're That's... totally energy inefficient. Yeah. So you allow them, but under guidelines, to do ones that are correct in the look of them yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. But you'd want the shingle style on the outside, things like that redone. But the inside of that building is going to be totally gutted. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's useless. Yeah. I don't think that by branding it as a local historic landmark really hinders um, no. a buyer because somebody that buys that building already has an eye towards preservation because they're buying into an old, old area. You know, it, it may limit the <clears throat> pool, but the thing is there are people who will buy it because of that. Yes, that's okay. kind of what I was trying to say yeah. is that, you know, they would feel like that they're going to have yeah. certain protections. And again, you know, if they have to come to us with, you know, mm -hmm. their plans and all that, 
I think that we would be very open to pretty much doing, like you said, whatever they need to do yep. with just a few with, with, caveats from with, us. With guide, just a few. guidance to it. But yeah. again, the town would have to get to that point of putting it on the market for, uh, you know, to, to get rid of it with those type of things and mm -hmm. those caveats. But how do you get, I mean, when did, it, I, I shouldn't say how do you get that. Uh, who makes those decisions in the town? Yeah, town I don't know if it, yeah, yeah. if it's just, you know, or town manager's town office council. takes the lead yeah. on it. Recommends it to council, right? I think so, yeah. but I don't know for sure. Well, so anyway, there were some yeah. like that where they basically said, you know, not opposed to the idea, we're just not there yet. Um, what about the townhouse police station? The, I think that was another one where they're not sure yet what it is that their envision is and so yeah it's head head development versus preservation i get it well there were you have both you can but you the can. town's far from hearing that argument that's well they need to from us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you know anything that's considered for that site should consider and it can be developed it's yeah. a big site but it should that whoever is going to do that it should be with the stipulation that the town hall is incorporated into the overall design yeah. of whatever is going to happen you can see i mean that's what successful towns who do yes their things correctly do they incorporate the historic fabric into the development that they do and they have a, a savvy developer who knows how to do that with a good design team and that doesn't mean they got to make it real expensive but they're being yeah. sensitive to the whole concept of that and incorporating mm -hmm. it in and that right. should be yeah. a, an absolute part of that parcel right. when that thing gets done and that eventually going forward into the future guarantees the success of the town yes as far as a place where people want to come and look you know if we just wipe it out yep. like here's an example in downtown san bernardino and downtown Riverside, California. Downtown Riverside held on to all their heritage. They kept all their old buildings and rehabbed them, turned them into condos and theaters and mixed use buildings and all that. And their city is thriving. Nighttime activity, bars, movies, all kinds of people are walking around. San Bernardino knocked everything down yeah. and put up yeah. 1960s style steel and yeah. glass dead at night nobody around yeah. nobody wants to go down there at night well we have the perfect example right here in washington village if you look at the old pictures of yeah. that when it was the way it, the, the way village. that was with mm -hmm. the stores and i'm not saying that you have to keep it like that they changed right but when that got done and that whole thing was knocked down all beautiful historic homes were taken down and they built an ugly plaza yeah again 60s style ugly mm -hmm. junk yeah and you know it's very maddening to you know, look at how they destroy this. If it had been done right, it would have. They would have designed the thing like a lot of successful villages have done in New England, yeah. where the stuff replicated the look of that mm -hmm. and was attractive yeah. and attracted people to the, come in. Historic East Greenwich, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, historic yeah. East. There was no such thing as historic yeah. East Greenwich. That was just Main yeah. Street downtown, right? Yeah. But now it's historic. And there's all kinds of high-end restaurants mm -hmm. down there and nightlife. But even down below, we went down to eat down on the water last night. All those old houses that are all nice ones, like the ones that were torn down yep. in Washington Village and that, are lovely. They've all been, you know, they. and I don't know whether they have a program that helps homeowners in a sense of giving them either tax credit or whatever, but none of that stuff has ever been done here and no one ever talks about it. Mm -hmm. So we should talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, because I think- Always room for education. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like if they're going to build, because I heard the plan was to have four separate apartment buildings in there and they could like use the town, hall, the old town hall as like a clubhouse as right. The meeting center or what, yeah. whatever, you know, like that. Yeah. And, and just maintain the facade. Yep. So, so it wouldn't really take a whole lot to, to do that. I, I mean, I'm going to give another example of something that truly shocked me because I never thought it would come out as good as it would, is in Harris, the low uh, the uh, affordable housing. They took those two buildings that were literally falling down mm -hmm. right there in Harris next to the bridge at Lincoln Avenue. And you have you visited that? House? I've seen, I 
don't remember if I've driven past or if I've driven past in Google okay. Street View, but right. I know what you're talking about. I, I know what they look like. Those buildings were literally falling down. Yeah. Everybody thought that they were just going to get someone would torch them. And they have turned that into absolutely lovely, mm -hmm. affordable housing. And I went down when they were first doing it and talked to the guys just because I was interested in, you know, because it was amazing. I grew up right in the neighborhood. So, you know, I'm, I'm so familiar with it. And But watching how that evolved and how it came out and how it fits into the fabric of that area, mm -hmm. it looks like it belongs there. It was done with quality enough materials that it's going to last. And it kept like the old stone building that was existing. And it's a beautiful example of what you mm -hmm. can do with are the right the ones, developer. Are they the same ones that are building the new section? There's a new section going in No. next door. No, oh. that's Socotra. He's so, putting up storage what, buildings. Are you describing Harris Mill Raceway? Because that's on this list. No, the, the Harris Mill Raceway, 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 that's different. No, the Raceway is... Uh, up the street from up the, street. Up the street a little further. Oh, it's all you, overgrown. You remember yep. what the status on that was? It was, yeah, that's not for what this is. Because remember that at the end of the day, this is a zoning overlay mm -hmm. for like buildings renovation. Mm -hmm. It's it doesn't really relate. It's more like we would that would be more something that you would put on a list like what Norma is making of communicate what the historic you know importance of the asset is that's on the ground, what it related to, but it's not something that you would apply this kind of zoning overlay to because not? there's nothing to review, you know. It's, in our ordinance, this... though, we have in there that it's not just structures, it's historical areas like... But know. that's not what it's... That's not the what it's for. It's for, like... Is that the section that's up front that describes, like, purpose? So this would... So it's would be the historical significance, a landmark of historical significance, mm -hmm. and this will protect it from demolition without consideration. Yeah, but we're talking about things other than structure, right. historic landmark. Well, that's, that's what I mean. Right? Right. Right. It should be protected from demolition yes. without consideration. It should be filled in. So that's why I think it, mm -hmm. I, I guess I think it should be filled be. in. Yeah, you'd have to get DEM to allow you to do that, though. No, but you, still, I mean. Yeah, technically it could, yes. But anyway, the ordinance specifically says that we can use the term local historic landmark for an empty lot if mm -hmm. something important happened there. So back to the other, you're, you're hoping and looking for historic designation for like the old, for the town hall police station mm -hmm. or the, the uh, athletic center. Athletic, Anthony Athletic Association. Anything else? Well, there's also the Comstock Homestead. Where is that? It's on the bike pass. But where? Uh, pass. Can we pass? Um, it says let's try to do it on a map. Property. It's not a land trust property. Yeah. Past uh, the about a mile up west of Saint Germain Store. Yes, west west of Saint Germain Store. Let's try because I wasn't able to find any address, but maybe if we there's no address. Well, there's a plat and lot number, so let's okay. see if we can visually yeah. locate it, assuming this thing is uh, walking. And I didn't write this. I just I found it and I reformatted it to make it look nice. Uh, <clears throat> says it has been designated as a possible nomination to the National Register of Historic Places. Where did that list come from then? Um, that is that the website information there. It's stuff I put together for the uh, town. Com uh, comprehensive plan. Hmm. Um, oh, that is okay. in the oh, survey of the uh, Trestle Trail. Yeah, I have I have both Sorry, surveys for the east blocked. side and the west side, and that is mentioned in there as a possible uh, no nomination. Uh -huh. That it might okay. it might might be other. Well, I think a good step right. would be declare right. a local landmark. Yeah. So because it says here right. national historic places because of the remains wow. of the farm and yeah. mill site. Yeah. That can still be seen. Yes. Yeah. Let's try it again. Oh, and the, the fire alarm buildings on here. That is already that's, one of the two properties. I guess it just doesn't want to give it us that option. Let's try imagery hybrid then. Thanks to me and Norma. 
Good. Um, St. Germain's store is up here, is that right? Uh, uh, west of... Hill Farm Road? Yes, they are so... west. They are west. Okay. So You're 17? It's a land trust property. You're 17. Which I think 17. will probably show up as Town of Coventry. Used to be both There's to Zero Ledge Road town, of, so maybe like one of these over here, like Ledge Road. Is it off of Ledge Road? It's past the le the quarry. Yeah, so a little further west, maybe. Okay. I looked at a house on Ledge Road. It was brand new construction, but on a dirt road. Uh, Here's another one, Ledge Road town of Coventry. Do you remember? Is it like on the curve? Is it past the curve? Is it east of Williams Crossing Road? I would say yes. Okay. Well, so I think, it's is it like the, the Whipple area. property? Yeah, it's in that general area there, near okay. Ledge Road, near the, near the quarry. So it might be it might be the Whipple mm -hmm. property. Um, let's try. Well, it was owned by Bowden, Bowden. And then oh, the, okay. Um, and then the uh, land trust. I don't, I don't know how those things work. But they've got some maps. So voting yeah, conservation so area trail map. map. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's it doesn't show way. up on here. Yeah. So, Alex, you don't have like this with your notes on it to show which ones are not town owned That's and which ones are which right? and all that. We went through with GIS at the time. Because that would have been real helpful to bring that to the commission so we could see it's it. Not showing the railroad there, is it? Yeah, it's down here. Yeah. Okay. Because the railroad it ran through, through it. Okay. Part of it's on one side and part of it's on the other side of the railroad. That's there to show the trails. Yeah. But it's in that general area? Yeah. I've got some pictures of it at home. I'll have to look it's at it. Williams Crossing right there. And he was a colonel or something in the militia. During the Civil War, not in wow. In the he didn't go to fight them with. Do we know if that's town owned or not? Um, yeah, trust. if it's land trust, then it would land be trust town owned. Property, yeah. So it is Coventry land trust. It's not like in some private owner's no. land trust. No, 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 no. Coventry is land trust. trust. Well, that would be an easy one then, right? Yeah. So there's probably then a. You know, I'll have to bring it up with like dog again or something like that. So there may be like a conceptual difference in how they see what this tool is, because my understanding is that it's a the local like historical area zoning exists. It's like basically for buildings. Oh. So yeah. It's so there's so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to figure that out then. Well, All right. Yeah, basic defining counts. what exactly it covers because yeah. of there's other places that. Well, we have it here in New York. It's going to be codified. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be just a building. Exactly. And other places, I think, should be protected. And it's historic. It's not just something that we're trying to do. This is yeah. job one of preservation in right. any municipality is that you're not just saving buildings. Well, and for one thing, you're saving sites. Well, if it stays a land trust property, it's different. It's, yeah. Like Black In that specific case. Yeah. Black but you know, there's also the the uh, in Anthony the uh, Isaac. What was his name? Peck. The Peck. What's his name? Peck. Mm. Yeah, the machine shop. Not Isaac. Perez Peck. Okay. Um, his mm. he he was. Is that the the um? It, it ended up being the Searles Capwell site. Too. Yeah. Is so that the, one, is that a land trust property? No, it's a town owned property. It's an archaeological site. Okay. It's a town owned property. Okay. So, so they knew it was wooded. Yes. Okay. The wheel is stuck it's in the just, tree. Right. The one where, where you yeah. have you walk that way. Because here. it says, well, I'm going to go get that. I mean, you wheel. still have so uh, the remains of yeah. the sawmill stuff. The right, yes. Architectural. It's actually in the. The uh, Perez uh, Mill Pond, the, the dam broke in the 20s, and the dam is still there with yep. the break. Yep. I see a change so that I make to this ordinance. Mm -hmm. Under definitions, <clears throat> I see why you're thinking the way you are. Local historic landmark, the definition is a specific structure 
as designated by ordinance of the town of Coventry pursuant to this chapter. It should say a specific structure or site. Mm -hmm. I have the language somewhere. Um, maybe it's elsewhere in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that'll be a realm for follow up anyway. Yeah. Um, well, if it's going to go on the 27th, though? No, no, I know. It's to be figured out, but I'm just saying we don't, I guess, in this very moment. No, what I'll do is I'll uh, make an adjustment and send it to you in an email. Okay. So uh, that's basically the story. I mean, it's. Yeah. So if, if they're willing to do read and summit. How does that, so what happens next? An actual you, paper needs to be filed. Yeah, so, so as I understand it, now. it's it's going to get looked at by legal. Um, it'll be, they're aiming for later this month, the 27th, I think is a Tuesday, for it to have its, it's on the brain there, for it to have its first reading. And so I guess there's like, it goes before the council three times. Mm -hmm. The first time they look at what the draft is and they just conceptually say like, do we like this? Do we not like this? Um, you know, assuming they say, yeah, we like this. And the second time around, they look at it. This is government process, isn't it? You know, they look at it and then they decide, you know, is there any kind of substantive edit they want to make, things like that. And then I think the third time that it comes before them is when they vote. Um, can, can you see, can you make sure that it comes back to us before it goes to the town council so we can see what the, we wouldn't want to learn of any changes that are made to it? At the meeting. So you're saying, yeah, for which one? For the first reading even? Or are you saying for the set between the first and the second? Where, or what? Wherever we can call it final, after it's final by the town. So that's probably <clears throat> for the third reading then. Okay, let me make a note Just of so that. we can have a quick once over in case there is a change. Because not that we would want to hit the brakes on what they're saying. We understand the hierarchy here. But they might make a change without knowing what we know. So we'd have to be careful. It doesn't get posted as an ordinance and all of a sudden we find out that they changed something that makes it structurally unsound. So I'm I'm within I agree. I actually think we want to see it before the first reading. So you sent your draft. Yeah, I want to I'm sure they've edited it. I would prefer you want to see it. what the edits are before yes. it goes. Right? Yeah. So we want to yeah, see what right. it looks like now before right. it goes in front of the house. Right. Okay before first. So I guess just you know monitor it and if you know get it back to us when they does the next town council meeting the 27th? Yeah. And you should, yeah, if you're not already subscribed on, through Rhode Island Secretary of yeah, State I to get all those sorts of updates, you probably, I, just I guess I don't know website. how they do it. Yeah, but you'd figure it'd get posted to the town website too. It will. So um, at least we post stuff for I'll, the planning commission. I'll make this change and get it to you tomorrow. Okay. Just because I, I apologize for not having that clearly in there. So. I'll, I'll mention it over to Doug too to make sure if we need to then do a follow up phone call or whatever, how it needs to flow. Yeah. So the first reading will include the red line changes and the proposal that read and summit. It's rolled into one thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have it all on the same uh, council item. Okay. They bring the act of bringing the ordinance back before them is to achieve, you know, the fact, A, the fact that. Let's try this time to get it actually put into the zoning code where it never happened before, but also, you know, to institute this landmark term and then to add to the list. So it's achieving all those things with one document. Okay. At least that's how it's to be structured. That's probably good, I guess, as far as updates on that. You asked for public comment. If there was anybody else there. Yeah, let's take a look at Zoom. Yeah. No, nope. no, nope. nobody there. So are we ready to adjourn? I'll make a motion. It's the usual time. To adjourn. Second, second motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are now adjourned at 729. Like clockwork each time. Uh...